All right, we are on day 15 of learning Japanese using AI. And this is the halfway point. I'm really glad we finally made it here. And I think to just do a little something special, it's not going to be this day or episode. It's going to be on the next one or perhaps the one after that, probably the next one. I'm going to bring on my primary Japanese native source and have her basically judge some of the ChatGPT stuff. Mostly, we're probably going to do, uh, do stuff related to the chat and like reading and texting each other and stuff like that and seeing if ChatGPT's Japanese is like natural. So if you guys happen to have any questions for like a Jap Japanese native speaker, like feel free to leave it in the comments down below. If you happen to make it before, uh, if you happen to leave it before uh, tomorrow's thing, then I'll try to get to it and um, insert it in that episode, tomorrow's episode, probably tomorrow, most likely. But yeah, let's get to normal practice for today, though. So we're going to do what we've normally been doing, which is the basic Boom Pro stuff and the Kanji stuff. And then tomorrow, like we said, we'll bring on my Japanese native source to talk about um, or do more interesting things related to the chat and texting and reading and stuff like that. All right, let's get to it. So I haven't had a chance to actually ask about this one yet. So I will do that maybe tomorrow, but we'll see. Let's go ahead and move on to kata, kata, way of doing how to manner of ing. So I already know how to use this. Um, I learned it in Japanese language school. It's a pretty useful one. So you have the ma stem and instead of doing mas, you say kata instead. So basic, basically right now we are learning the tsukai kata of kata, like how to use. And I think we know the kanji for this one, so we don't need to have the furigana. When kata is attached to the mas stem of a verb, it carries a nuance of way of doing. This is identical to kata's standard meaning of way or direction. So we have nani sono tabekata kuchi wo uji da yo. What is that way of eating? Please close your mouth. Nani sono tabekatta kuchi wo toji da yo. So we've learned this one, which is close. I didn't realize it can be read as to as well. And we know kuchi. Nektai no musubi katta o ototo ni oshiaru. And we know oshiaru. I will teach my brother the way to tie a necktie. So. This right here, musubi, must mean like tie. Gaikoku go no benkyo no. What is this one? It's part of shigoto, but like by itself. Shikata. Shikata ga karanai. I do not know how to study a foreign language. Shikata. I didn't realize that that's what you would use for it. Interesting. Okay. When used with sudo verbs, sometimes the construction shikata is seen. I'm glad that, that like Boom Pro somewhat reads my mind is like, oh, I'd have no idea why they use that instead of just a regular sudo. So having an explanation right afterwards is very helpful. Thank you. This has exactly the same meaning as the form without kanji, maybe thought of as meaning way of dealing, attending to as she's original meaning is to attend to. In these cases, the sudo verb is followed by no and then shikata. Senpai, let's see. Fax. no shikata wo oshiete kudasai. Do people still use fax machines? Watashi wa, is that high school? Koko no toki ni haha kara chokin no shikata wo oshi oso oso warimashita. Man, I read that so poorly. Okay, so this is koko. Koko no toki ni haha kara chokin chokin no shikata wo owarimashita. That's an interesting term. This is the same kanji as oshieru, but I'm guessing it means like learned versus um, teach. And chokin is probably to save money. All right, let's keep going. After attaching kata to a verb, the entire expression is thought of as a noun phrase. This means that it can be followed by particles such as wa, o, and others to create longer sentences. Hikoshi. I don't know what this one is. Hikoshi ya san. Hikoshi is to move, right? No kagu no hakobi kata o mitte. 
見て彼らの体力にびっくりした。After seeing the way the removalists were carrying the furniture, I was surprised by their strength. Yeah, this sentence I would not be able to understand whatsoever. Hikoshiya. Hikoshiya san. Okay, Hikoshi is like to move, I think, and then when you add ya to it, I guess it's like representing a company. Let's, let's get some assistance here from ChatGPT. Moving companies or movers. Okay, Kagu. Kagu must mean furniture, and then Hakobi Katta is like carrying. So, Hikoshi san no Kagu no Hakobi Katta o mite, karera no Tairyoku. Tairyoku ni bikurista. So, Tairyoku is like strength. Okay. There's like a lot of new stuff I'm learning as I'm learning this grammar point that I basically already know. Okay. Kare no oyogi katta wa henda. Kare no oyogi katta wa henda. His way of swimming is strange. Okashi no tsukari katta o. What's this? Manabu. Tsukuri. Okashi no tsukuri katta o. Manabu. Manabu. Don't really understand this sentence, so I will ask ChatGPT. Can you break the sentence down for me? I think manabu is the only thing I didn't really understand. This is the verb sentence means to learn to study. Manabu. And there are so many ways to like say it now. It's getting confusing. So there's manabu and there's uh, narai, naraimas. And there's also now the new one from the previous thing. Where was it? This one? No. Also, warimashita. How many ways are the how many words are there for learning something? Manabu, narau, benkyo suru, osowaru, minitsukeru, oboeru. And each one has a different sort of nuance behind them. But first, to gaining knowledge or skills, often through study or experience, it implies learning through practice, instruction, or lessons from someone. A common or neutral word for studying, usually referring to academic learning or self study. Indicates that someone is teaching you something. Also, waru. Okay. More focused on receiving instruction than the act of learning itself. Refers to in.、Uh, minitsukeru. That one we haven't heard of yet. Refers to internalizing knowledge or mastering a skill. Implies long term learning and retention. Oboeru. Oboeru. In process of memorization. Shutoku suru. To acquire or master. Formal term used for mastering or acquiring skills. Yeah, that is a lot, but I can see why. I can see the nuances now, so it helps me better understand like, when one is used. So thank you, ChatGPT. After attaching kata to a verb, the entire expression is thought of as a noun phrase. This means that it can be. Okay, we already read this. Why are we doing this again? Sorry. We are a bit tired today. Okay. Tsuma wa rimokon no karanai. Tsuma wa rimokon no tsukai kata ga wa karanai. My wife doesn't know how to use the remote. 妻はリモコンの使い方がわからない。彼のスパゲッティの食べ方はよくない。彼のスパゲッティの食べ方はよくない。彼のスパゲッティの食べ方はよくない。彼のスパゲッティの食べ方はよくない。Okay, good enough. Also, we completely forgot to start a timer. So, I'm just going to go off a of feel today and just do maybe like three, and then we'll move on to practicing kanji. だけで。Just by, just with. Haven't heard of this one before? So let's check it out. Dake de is a combination of the adverbial particle dake and the case marking particle de. That's what I figured. This expression is regularly thought of as the meaning just by a. However, the literal translation is a bit closer to with only a. This reflects the de particle's standard usage by showing a tool that is being used to achieve a certain result. To use dake de, simply attach it to the end of any non mas form of verb or noun. Okay. Kanojo to hanas dake de tanoshi. Okay. Kore wa. What do you get when you have electric and the kid symbol together? Denko? Denchi. Okay. Denchi renji, of course. Denchi renji dake de obun. Obun no kino wa tuite nai. This is just a microwave, an oven function is not included. これは電池レンジだけでオーブンの機能はついてない。So this must mean function. 機能だけ differs from しか in one very important way. だけ highlights that there is was more than one option, but that only one thing was chosen and used. 
However, shika implies there is only one possible option to begin with. Interesting. I occasionally use shika, not too much. So that's good to know. Shika is like, that's the only option. Nake is like, there's more options, but that's the only thing we used out of those options. Okay. Party ni ikku dake de tanoshi. Party ni ikku dake de. Party ni ikku dake de tanoshi. Kao o mitta dake de. Kare wa ii hito datto wakatta. Kao mitta dake de. Kare wa ii hito datto wakatta. Kao o mitta dake de. Kare wa ii hito datto wakatta. I could tell he was a good person just by his face. Okay. Isho ni. We should know this one. We, are, we should also ni know isho ni. Isho ni jikan o sugosu. Sugosu dake de. Naka yoku narimashita. Naka yoku narimashita. We became good friends just by spending time together. Isho ni jikan o. Jikan o. Isho ni jikan o. Sugosu dake de. Naka yoku narimashita.一緒に時間を過ごすだけで仲良くなりました。一緒に一緒にだけで仲良くなりました。一緒に時間を過ごすだけで仲良くなりました。彼を見ただけで性格が悪いと分かった。彼を見ただけで性格が悪いと分かった
and not in Noldet. I specifically remember asking my native source that when we were at the Getty Museum. What's the difference between Kara and Noldet? I went to the hair salon, but since it was expensive, I came home. Okay. To make Daga sound a bit softer, sometimes ne is added. However, this is not so common in modern day Japanese as more limited to older generations. Kimi wa, kimi wa ii hito da to kita daga ne. Mada kimi o shinyo dekinai. However, I can't trust you yet. Shinyo dekinai. Kimi. Due to daga and deska using ga, the formal equivalent of kedo, this phrase can sound quite stiff, therefore it is far far more common to hear demo at the beginning of, at the be, uh, hear demo at the beginning of a sentence in casual speech. Okay. Yeah, so that's the fun fact. That's basically what my native source told me. Uh, ga is the equivalent of kedo. You don't really hear ga too much. Okay. Let's just finish this off. Uh, I don't I think we're good with dake that daitoryo ga the president said that, however, I don't believe it. ですが、私は信じません。大統領が言いました。ですが、私は信じません。毎日運動しました。ですが、痩せていません。毎日運動しました。ですが、痩せていません。so losing weight is yasette yasette nai saikin boku wa yasette nai okay honto honto wa watashi ga is this yeah honto wa watashi ga shinakute wa naranai shinakute wa naranai daga ne kimi ni shite hoshii however i want you to do it shinakute wa naranai honto wa watashi ga shinakute wa naranai daga ne kimi ni shite hoshii I'm still a little stiff while saying it, but it's gonna be how it is today. I'm just gonna keep going. Kore ga kihon ruru da. Daga regae mo aru. Regae mo aru. Kore ga kihon ruru da. Regae mo aru. Daga regae mo aru. Kore ga kihon ruru da. Daga regae mo aru. Okay. Ashita kara ryokou ni... I should know ryokou. Ashita kara ryokou ni ikimasu. Desu ka, mada chiketto o katte imasen. Ashita kara ryokou ni ikimasu. Desu ga, mada chiketto o katte imasen. Okay, good enough. This is helping me doing some speaking practice as well. And I do have like a reference to try to shadow. So it's good. It's good practice. Okay, that is like as much as I can do. I am too tired for anything more. So we'll continue with Nakte tomorrow. And then for Kanji, you know, for Kanji, I might do some of the things that I read. I feel like that's a good idea. I haven't seen any Kanji lately from my texting with the native source that I haven't recognized. So let's do that. Let's do this one. I feel like these are pretty common kanjis and I should know it by now. But whenever I see it, it just reads as a jumble. So let's do these th three kanji right here. Let's also do kimi because I don't use it very often, but I hear it a lot in, in anime. So why not know the kanji? And that way we don't have to like read it, read the furigana anymore. Let's do furu as well. Furu is a, seems to be a very common thing, especially in Japan, I hear... People talk about rain and snow all the time, so we're not snow, but only during winter since I was there during winter. Okay, so now we have the breakdown of these ones, and I'm ready to do some Wani Kani as well, if needed. Let's see. So this is Gai, and it also is Soto, I believe. And let's... We really sank down in our chair. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. We just wrote day 15 right here. It's not day 14 anymore. That way we don't waste paper. This notebook would have stayed in, in the cabinet forever anyways if I weren't working on this. Let's see. So we got you and we meet, we've we got mboku meaning divination. It's not quite a breakdown, enough of a breakdown. So let's summon Wani Kani, our kanji guide. All right. So they read this as soto. And we have evening and ho. 
They call this the to kanji. I don't really see a to though. Divination. Oh, I guess it does look like to. Yeah, for the katakana character. So evening and to. This one I know pretty well, so I won't spend too much time on it. It's just that pretty easy. And then koku or kuni, I believe, meaning enclosure. Kuni ga mae. And then tama or o, meaning jewel or king. Yeah, this is actually one that I have learned as well. But let's check it out. Country right here. Mouth, kuchi, king, and then drop. So this by itself means king. O, o sama. I, I know that from the haiku, from haiku, where I think o sama is, was the nickname for Kageyama. Interesting that this right here means ball though. It looks very similar. If you just add like a dash to the right side and it turns into ball. Tama, okay. I think I have it down. The enclosure, the three things with the dash. You could not see the dash. Let me do that again. Three things and the dash. And that's kuni. And if you put it together, it's gai koku. And then this right here is go. And we have encountered this plenty of times. It's in Nihongo, but let's learn how to write it properly. So it has se in it, and it has five in it, and it has mouth in it. Okay. Very simple composition made out of stuff we should theoretically already know. And that's go. Got it. All right. And it seems I can... Oh, oh spoke too soon. Okay. Seems like, seems like I can write it with no issues, so we'll just move on to kimi. It means you informally, often used for close relationships or when addressing young people, younger people, or lord, depending on the context. Here's a breakdown of the kanji components. So there's in, meaning to lead or command, and then mouth. And let's find out what Wanikani says. All right, here it is. And it means buddy, apparently. There's the yo, slide, and mouth. But the yo looks slightly different. So it's like poking out a little bit. And the slide goes through the middle like that. And then kuchi right there. Yeah, and as usual, I'm writing it quite terribly, but it's good enough to recognize it, I think. This one's a pretty recognizable kanji, very simple. Okay, let's move on. Oh, okay. And this is this is fudu. I was actually looking at it and I was like, what is this? Um, ko, it means to send, fall, or get off. So fudu, to fall as in rain or snow. And it has this one, which represents like, apparently it says hill or mound, but I thought it was like the, the location radical. Either way, let's keep going. This part indicates a phonetic component. I don't know if that's true, but I looked it up on Wanikani and they call this the building radical. Okay, but it's made out of stuff that we already know. So the building radical with the winter radical, and then they say it's cow, but it looks slightly different from cow. Instead of this here, it's in there instead. Wow, that's interesting. And that is descend or to fall. Let's write it one more time. Okay. This one honestly kind of looks like a generic kanji. Uh, the only thing that makes it distinguished is the weird thing under the winter radical. The weirdly written cow radical, I guess. Let's see if it's in any other compounds. So here it is, kōsha, oriru. It's in oriru. So this this kanji can be used for oriru, okay. So oriru is like to get off, like, I guess if you're in a crowded train or bus, you can say like, Orimas, like you're you're gonna get off. I've heard that said a couple times. Orofuru iko kosan kosan suru kofuku. Okay, sounds good. I think that was everything. These ones felt pretty fast. I think a lot of them were. I don't know. I I expected more things to be like kire. I wonder if I can write that kanji right now. I feel like it's been a bit of time, so I don't think I can write it. But let's just try for for fun. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. I really don't remember much of how to write it. Okay, I seem to remember at least some interesting boxes right here. Then it was the shika for deer kanji, but I don't quite remember how to do it. I don't know why I'm writing wadao right now. I really don't know. I'm just gonna look it up. This is unfortunate. This is why review is necessary. Okay, so it's the ito kanji with big and one of these then we have this thing with the shika 
kanji. I forgot what this represents down here. Maybe I need to go back and watch my own video or I can just look it up. Okay, so it's a radical of odd when it's together like that. But it also has that one box thingy. Aha, compare. I was trying to figure out which what the radical meant again. I think it was kurabed, kurabed. Okay, that was just a quick refresher on one of the most complex kanji I've seen. So hopefully next time I can write it actually. It's such a complex one. Yeah. All right. I think that's going to be it for today. We, I still feel a little slightly unstructured regarding kanji. I think it still would be a good idea to, to try to learn with some form of structure. So I think what I'm going to do next time is finally bring out the DS, my um, native source basically left a DS here that with a game, with um, a game that helps you work on kanji. So I'm going to, I don't think I can, maybe I can try to have a screen record the thing, but um, overall, I'll just use it to figure out what kanji to work on and what kanji the game introduces. It's a, it's meant for like little kids, basically. It's in all Japanese and helps little kids learn new kanji in a structural way. So I think I'll try it out. Uh, it'd be a good idea to, to actually use the thing that my native source gave me. So yeah. Let's, let's try that next. I, I know we're kind of devi deviating from the whole like um, AI thing a little bit, but I think it's gonna be more of a supplemental tool we'll use once in a while versus like, like I said back then, a guide. And we will be doing more interactions with it for more special days, I guess. So for tomorrow, especially, I think will be interesting with just seeing how good it is for natural Japanese. I think once I learn that, once I like find out, okay, is it speaking natural enough? Is it speaking in a way that is actually helpful for a beginner or for someone at my level? Um, and to have like a native speaker tell me, yeah, this, this does sound like pretty good and natural, like you can learn from it. That will basically give me the confirmation I need to actually use it more often and like consider it a viable method of practicing because before doing that there's like there's no way i'm just guessing whether or not it is natural or not so yeah i, I think i want that confidence before i actually employ more resources into using the tool to practice with but so far i've been doing my best to try to at least use it for whatever i can um but yeah challenge wise because I, I do like trying my best to stick to the spirit of a challenge. But challenge wise, I feel like for the past pr practices, I've been using Boom Pro and I've been sort of just occasionally sticking in the kanji for ChatGPT. But honestly, I've just been kind of going to Wani Kani for the main thing. So I'm almost like barely using ChatGPT for the past practices. And to me, that kind of like makes me feel like I'm not sticking to the challenge of using AI. So I do, I will try to make more like special days where I really, really like go into the AI aspect of, of this challenge. Um, but for now, I, I'm just glad that I'm practicing Japanese in general and that the challenge itself like started me off at a good pace and just started me off like practicing. So yeah, that's all I have to say for this one. Day 15 is basically done. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And don't forget if you want to ask any questions for tomorrow's thing. And maybe I'll try to, to if, if your questions aren't like gotten to by then, <clears throat> like if it's a late question, then I can still try to answer it at a certain point by just like, you know, texting my native source and yeah. So that should work too. Okay, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.